Lindsey Williams is our guest for another 20 minutes or so, maybe 30. I want to go to Alicia, George, Nancy, Angela, Lee, and others that want to talk to Lindsey. And Lindsey, I know these people's names. I know who they are. I knew who the other Mr. X was before he died of cancer. I know who the other person is and his uh, his wife, who Lindsay worked with on the Trans Alaskan Trans Alaskan Pipeline. He's good friends with her, and he's really creeping me out because he just told me he said, "Listen, they brought you up and said they know you're having a big effect, and the elite are watching you. They brought you up. I didn't. I didn't bring you up to them, Alex. That it is creepy because I've I've got to do what I'm doing, and and you know I'm not perfect. I'm a worldly guy. You know I I pray every day that God keep me on the straight and narrow, but. I don't willfully join in evil. I don't like what the globalists are doing. And it's so ruthless what they're doing. And, and, and Lindsay, we're also saying that the elitists you talk to are a little bit freaked out as well. Because it's one thing to be part of this corrupt system, but as it nears its, 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 its fruition, and as this world satanic government is about to be openly born, this eugenics government, in their words, of mass death and evil, uh, I've talked to major, uh, I've talked to a medical doctor, I know the head of state she's treated, and uh, this head of state said, I'm freaked out about what's about to happen. Uh, Lindsay, uh, I mean, repeat to the listeners what you just told me. You sure you want me to say this over the air? <laughs> I mean, this is interesting. Uh, Alex, I guess the best way to, to, to punctuate this is to say misery loves company. Because uh, I've known these people for a number of years, and they've never brought you up. But all of a sudden, you seem to be coming up in some of the emails I'm getting. And, and I know as a result that you're making such a major impact out there right now on the whole nation. You know, the other, uh, here a while back, we traveled across the country. And uh, I would pick up you know, on the uh, on the motorhome, I'd pick up your radio programs from here and yonder. I mean, you really are impacting the nation. No, the I understand. But, I mean, specifically, it's creepy. There. It's creepy to have them talking about, you know, they're examining me and you you yourself have gotten death threats. I've gotten those as well, but not death threats from these guys. You got death threats from the other fella. But, I mean, specifically here, I mean, uh, well, I mean, I know you're holding something back on me. I mean, you say they're bringing me up. I mean, in what context? Well, they're bringing you up in the fact that you're making such a, um, okay, I don't know whether it would be millions that you're reaching or whether it would be the impact that you're making. Uh, they didn't necessarily talk about the things that you're saying, even though I'm sure that that's the bottom line of the whole thing. But as I say, misery loves company. I'm glad you're out there now uh, so that we can all keep company together in, in them knowing who we are and listening to what we said. They're listening to your program. Uh, they're monitoring you. And I'm getting, next time, okay, the next time I get one of these emails in which you are alluded to, uh, I'll ship it off to you and have your producer give it to you. I'd like you to see what they're thinking about you. Well, I appreciate you doing that. I, look, look, I'm not, look, I don't like having to confront David Rockefeller or have others on that do it. I don't like having to talk about the Pentagon and, uh, and Halliburton and Dyncourt caught running child kidnapping rings. But, I mean, you, 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 if you don't speak out against them, it's approval. And I can't have that on my soul, on my on who I am. I couldn't sleep at night. I mean, I do little things, and later my conscience eats me up. Uh, and, and, and I just can't help it. And I, I, you know, I don't like that I get death threats. I don't like that my family's in danger and all the stuff that I've had happen. But I don't really talk about it on air. But, I mean, I've... I've got to be against these people. I mean, I don't know any other way. You, it's just what they're doing is fundamentally wrong, Lindsay. Well, it sure is. And 35 years ago, when I, you see, I had been a pastor of a church for 12 years. And then I went to Alaska as an aviation missionary. I'd been brought up in a wonderful Christian home with godly parents, never exposed to anything like the uh, dastardliness of these elitists. And I sat in their board meetings for three years' time and listened to what they had to say. And, and Alex, when I got through, I felt such a moral obligation. But yeah, Exactly. Stay there, Lindsay. Stay there. You know, you read the Bible and it talks about the spirit of certain cities, how cities had a wicked spirit or they felt bad. Uh, the, the prophets would feel oppressed upon entering them. And I remember in Sunday school not really understanding that. And I was just talking during the break about uh, Jaron's like, yeah, I don't like going to the zoo. It has a bad vibe. 
and you, and you go to Los because the animals aren't happy. You go to uh, Los Angeles, and everybody I talk to, I mean, it, it, it has a. I know we're actually on in Los Angeles, not not bashing you. I, mean, I love Malibu and the beautiful coast, but there is a oppressive vibe. Some people like it uh, that I've run into, but very few. I mean, there's like a spirit of evil. And when I look at China and I see the things they do and I watch their party meetings on YouTube, I mean, this is – and I know their works are so wicked. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I see the works of – and also D.C. has a horrible vibe. Uh, I mean, these are evil cities because they have evil in them. And, of course, at a spiritual level, uh, how would you quantify that from a Christian perspective, Pastor Williams, what I'm talking about, uh, about nations being turned over to evil, cities being turned over to evil? Uh, you know, as a Christian, you would say, and I would say, this isn't just that there is a feeling in the city from the, you know, group consciousness, the group collective, the, the, the group subconscious, as psychologists believe, because, you know, they certainly pick it up as well. They try to quantify it scientifically. You, you would say there's actually a demon over that city, wouldn't you? Yes. Uh, China's Mao uh, murdered more people than Stalin did. And yet we want to go and trade with them today and bring that spirit back to the United States of America. I mean, we're cutting our own throats. They, they don't want to trade with us for the sake of being able to necessarily just sell us things. Now, I don't know if this sounds strange, but they want our technology. Every single time Caterpillar, General Motors, anybody else goes on and builds a plant, they say, give us all of your patents. Give us all of your technology, or we will not let you build the plant. It's not the trade with America that they're interested in. They are interested in the technology, and once they get it, they'll turn around and throw it right back in our face, just like the Japanese did. We gave more of our steel prior to the last war, and they turned around and shot it right back at our soldiers. We're going to have the same thing out of China, mark my words. And Mr. Fromm said to me back nearly two years ago, he said, Chaplin, don't pay any attention to all of these other countries countries of the world. He said, even when there's a conflict over there in the Middle East, which, of course, by the way, you've heard me say they want it in the next few months' time, if they can get it, uh, to take attention off things. He said, don't pay attention to that. He said, that's not the real issue. He said, the real place you want to watch, and these are his exact words, he said, China is the big one. Folks, watch what's happening in China and Russia, and we are importing that evil right to America. Alex? What did he specifically say uh, dealing with China? I mean, just that they're going to take us over or be used as the muscle or a war? Well, basically, they're going to take us over. Uh, I don't think they'll be necessary. He never, okay, I'll put it this way. Well, you know why they're taking over? War with the United States of America. No, no I mean, they're taking China us over. North Korea is concerned. He did mention the fact that they basically will take us over. They will get all of our technology. They'll get everything from Boeing. They'll learn our stealth uh, bomber uh, secrets. They'll learn all the things they can by getting Caterpillar and General Motors and everybody else to go over there. They'll get our computer technology. And then once they've gotten it, they'll say, to who with you, we don't need you around. After all, if Mao mur murdered that many people years ago, more than Stalin, they wouldn't think a thing in the world about stealing all of our technology and then dropping us like a hot potato and turning those plants. I watched them nationalize things many years ago when I was pastor in Florida. I watched the Bahamas nationalize all industry. I mean, uh, Owens Corning heard a huge uh, farming venture out there. It was worth... Billions, probably. I used to see them fly out in their 707s on a regular basis when I was out there for seminars. And then the Bahamas turned right around one day out of a clear blue sky for no known reason and said, Oh, Americans, you don't own this. We never gave you the right to have it. They took over every single bit of it and ran the Americans out. The Chinese will do the identical same thing. Once they've gotten all of our patents and our technology, they will nationalize everything, well, including out the industry that we've sent over there in total bankruptcy by the time they're finished. Mark my words, you cannot do business with a nation that has the background and history that this is. But there again, you've got to realize where all this started. George Bush Sr., Daddy Bush, was the ambassador to China many years ago when China was a totally closed society. Nobody got in and out except him, and George Bush started every bit of this. His son finished it up when he was in there, and now today we are seeing new world order global trade.
betrayed all of these agreements, and it every bit started with Daddy Bush many years well, ago. Well, I agree with you, but he was the... China. He was the admitted, he was known as the Rockefeller Republican. He was the direct legate or gopher of David Rockefeller, who praises Mao in the New York Times, many other publications, even after it's known that he's the greatest mass murderer in history. And he was dispatched there. They signed the eugenics agreement for the one-child policy. They were then given unlimited funding. Uh, and the CFR said, you will now be given all the power. Uh, and uh, they... They are going to use China to bring the United States down. And people are like, well, we have this big military. They can't. The criminals run America. The criminals run this country. And and the Republicans and all of them have been bought off, just like with Ron Brown was going to get in trouble, Commerce Secretary, for taking Chinese bribes, and he was going to go public. And they just you know, blew his head off on board that airplane and then remote controlled it into a mountainside. And the coroner even went public at the Air Force, and they said, we don't care. I mean, this country, and, 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 and uh, go back to 1979 when they gave up the Panama Canal, and then Republicans went ahead with it. Why would we give them something we built? Because America isn't run by America, okay? That's what you got to understand. I want to go to phone calls, Lindsay. We're going to go to 30 after, but I want to go to Alicia, George, Nancy, Angela Lee. I also want to tell folks uh, if they want to call and get your elite in their own words, very powerful two-CD set that breaks all this down. It's 888-799-6111, 888-799-6111, or prophecyclub.com for any of my films. Uh, the Fall of the Republic that breaks all this down uh, on DVD, Infowars.com. Uh, or the Obama deception gets into the same area. Endgame covers what their endgame is after they've had the takeover, if they're successful. This isn't just going to be, you know, working for the Chinese. This is going to be, you're poor, so you, you don't get food rations unless you're sterilized. And it's all being well, proposed. Alex, you're, you're exactly right. I want to punctuate what you said just a moment ago after I finished up with what I said about the Chinese. They have talked with me over the years about what they're going to do. Yeah, little pieces here and little pieces yonder. And the conclusion you've just come to is exactly right. Everything you just said. And in my six DVD set, please, I beg you to get the latest CDs, but my six DVD set, I go into this in detail as to what these people have told me over a two-year period. No, but, but I mean, just to condense it. Go about China is exactly right. Just to condense it, though, eugenic sterilization, China is the beta test. They submitted to the eugenics plan. The Chinese leaders for 50, 60 years talk about, please nuke us. We hate our people. I mean, they hate their population. They're at war with them. They're just big, fat, bloated ticks that just suck off their people and use them as slaves. And the globalists are using the Chinese slaves to destroy our industry. And, it, and now we're going to... Find out, all of you yuppies that laugh and sent me thousands of emails over the years about how great China is, enjoy it. Enjoy it. You're going to be just like the IBM uh, engineers 15 years ago that would laugh at me when I'd be at the local pool, you know, community pool, or the, or the Dell engineers. I'd say, you know they're moving to China. You know the plan is to get rid of you. And then they'd laugh, and then years later they go, I'm not laughing now. My replacements are here. I got six months and I'm gone at half pay. Uh, and people say, oh, that's free market. It's not free market when, when taxpayer funded Chinese are trained in engineering at, at our universities and then sent over there to work in slave wages. Uh, it's a giant tariff on us. Uh, uh, I'm done talking about that. Let's cram in some calls. I'm going to skip this break here. And, and then at the end, I want to get into the gold predictions from Lindsey Williams. 